you sound pretty optimistic that the plane will be found and that eventually there'll be answers for, for the yeah. families and for the aviation industry. Um, I'm confident, you know. <laughs> It's always, you know, I actually say it's like looking for a jet plane, you know, in the area of Tasmania uh, with your eyes closed. Um, you know, that is the challenge. So it's, it's, it's still a challenge. You know, the, the, the search is one part, but to be able to go and find the wreckage is also a bigger challenge. Can you just remind us first about the searches that have been carried out so far and what they found? Um, we've had two searches going through, one which was headed by Australia and other one by a company called Ocean Infinity, um, and they didn't find uh, any evidence of the uh, aircraft in the bottom of the ocean. It's about two and a half thousand kilometers west of Perth in very deep water and very uh, inhospitable inhospitable uh, seabed conditions. So the announcement by Malaysia is um, uh, very good and timely as we approach the 10 year anniversary. But you know, every time we've actually had a new search, this is the third one, the, the technology has changed a lot. You know, uh, wh where uh, in, in the proposed one with Ocean Infinity, it'll be all done uh, mostly by remotely controlled uh, surface vehicles as well as underwater vehicles. So it's a very exciting time in a way, uh, both in terms of technology proving, but also in terms of the possibility of actually finding mm. uh, the wreckage. The technology may have improved, but the important point, I guess, is where they look uh, for the plane. Yeah. You research and model ocean currents. Where do you think this new search should focus? Uh, they're exactly? actually looking at an area which is, bit, you know, the proposed area is between uh, 33 and 36 degrees south. That area is the same area which has been searched uh, in the last two times. Uh, they're going a little bit wider than what they actually encompass. Our modeling result says that it may be a little bit to the north of that area. Uh, our modeling also directed uh, Blaine Gibson to go and find uh, lots of debris, uh, 22 pieces to be exact, that I actually told him where to go and he found them. Mm. So I'm hoping that uh, if they don't find it in the current search area, they would actually keep moving north. What could be left of the plane after all this time, Chari? Uh, only the, the really big pieces, because they would have been f uh, fallen to the bottom. So um, the wheels, the engines, uh, maybe part of the, um, the rear wings, etc., and, and maybe part of the fuselage. Because the pieces that we've been finding in the Western Indian Ocean has been very small, so there's evidence that a lot of the plane actually broke up. By now, though, would all those pieces be together, or would they be? You know, uh, they miles would and be. Miles apart? They would be scattered in an area probably two to three kilometers by diameter. It'll be spread out because it would, as it fell through the ocean, it would have actually dispersed. But once it's at the bottom, there's very calm areas. It's very cold. It's basically just like inside a fridge. So they would be preserved uh, in in that system. Uh, so if we found one piece, there's a likelihood we will find the whole wreckage. What are the various theories as to what happened to the plane, Cherry? There are many, many theories. Um, you know, that's one of the things that we want to find the wreckage. My experience is in uh, oceanographic uh, modeling, so um, I, we're confident that they're looking in the right place. Um, uh, but what actually happened, um, it's conjecture at the moment till we actually find some evidence.